soup on the river. I'm deeply grateful to you, Mr. Rat. Just call me Ratty. All my pals do. Thanks, Ratty. You sure Mr. Toad won't mind your bringing me along? Toad, mind? He's always glad to show off Toad Hall. And there it is, in all its glory. But I can only see the chimney tops. And how many there are. It's a palace. Mr. Toad must be very rich. Rich and foolish. Always some new fad. Now he's throwing away his money on cars. You mean he might even lose his beautiful home? That's exactly what I mean. Here, this was in last week's newspaper. Go ahead, read it. Toad in hospital? Car total loss? Oh my! Read on. Toad demolished his bakery van? Police charge the Toad with being an incompetent driver? Magistrate fines Toad. That's enough. That tells the story. But shouldn't somebody do something? Of course. That's why we're here. We're reading magic. Mr. Badger Wildwood? I was about to say, he knew Toad's father and his worry too. And if I'm not mistaken, here he comes. There's someone with him, following along behind. By George, there is someone. A very small person. <laughs> Old Badger doesn't know he's there. Now he'll have some fun. Isn't this a long walk for you, all the way from the Wildwood? Well, you may ask, my young friend. I am quite winded. And who is this fine, strapping young fellow you have with you? Portly Isles! And I gave you a penny to go home. Off with you, now go home. Off, off, go home. Try him with another penny, Badger. That's encouraging him. Yes, well, here you go, you little rascal. Now go home. He didn't even say thank you. No discipline. Let Mrs. Otter turn her back for one minute and off he goes. Go with you? Kid, clear out. You're a complete nuisance. <gasps> Have any of you seen? Oh, there you are. Oh, Mama was worried. <laughs> What's oh, good of you to take Portly about with you so much? Um, well, actually. The fact is. What are you talking about? Oh, we sometimes wonder why the kid doesn't stay home and play with his friends. But Portly doesn't have any friends. Oh, there aren't any children his age around. Doesn't he have chores to do around home? I'll see if he doesn't bother you in the future. Come along, Portly. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, oh, we didn't exactly mean. Oh, dear. But we do exactly mean. The kid's a nuisance. He's cute, too. Sort of. Well, at least we don't have to drag him along with us today. And now for our interview with Toad. Are you sure he's home? Well, he said he'd be when he invited us. I find it reasonable to expect him there. What sound is that? It's roaring down the road. There's a cloud of dust. It's a red car coming at full speed. Look at the cows gallop. The driver's waving his cap. Could it be? Oh, no. It's Toad. Too fast, reckless. My grand car. He's not slowing for the turn. He's looking back and, oh, waving. Toad, look ahead, you idiot. Oh, no, too late. I can't look. Oh, the car's moving over. Look at him now. Into the haystack. <sighs> Fool's luck. Come, let's help the poor lad. The car smashed. It was so beautiful. Toad, where are you? I'm sure this is the haystack he landed in. I found a wet foot. Oh! Thank goodness it's attached to the rest of him. Next car I buy, I shall learn first off how to stop her. The next car? I'm 
This is what I feared. Oh, Ratty, a badger, my best friend. Mr. Mole, Mr. Toad, welcome to Toad Hall. Mr. Toad. How about a cool drink, gentlemen? Such luck you all happened to turn up just now. Don't you remember? You invited us to come? Oh, yes, so I did, <laughs> so I did. He's dazed. Sit quiet a bit, Tony. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, I wanted you all here, for I've discovered the true purpose of life. Cars! You'll never drive that one again. And the money lost. Oh, poo, what money? I shall simply ring up for another car. Oh, Raddy, this is really living. The open road, the dusty highway, towns and parks, fields and cities. Here today, gone tomorrow. Travel, change, excitement! All of us to the village this afternoon for another car. Now look here, Toad. Give up this idea of buying another car. Travel by horse-drawn conveyance as nature intended. Oh, give up that glorious machine, that poetry of motion, the only real way to travel. Here today and next week tomorrow, town skipped, cities jump, always a new horizon. <laughs> oh, bliss, oh my. Toad, stop being silly. That machine nearly killed you just now. Oh, what roads lie before me. What dust cloud shall spring up behind me. What carts I shall fling carelessly into a ditch. A new craze always takes him like this. <laughs> Don't you? <coughs> Shh. Wait. Ow. Stop whining. You're sitting on my tail. Oh. Ouch. Come on, the governor. Easy with the ear. That's attached permanent like you know. Come along now or I'll give you a taste of my stick. Look what was hiding in your carriage house. A sniveling weasel. <laughs> what? Have we other guests? Like all of his kind. Uninvited. I was only taking a bit of a nap in the straw. How long have you unlawfully occupied Mr. Tony Copper? Ow! Now it ain't no use being overly hard on a poor creature. What ain't got no home of his own. True. Tramps and vagabonds. All of them. What shall we do with him? Take him to the police. Oh, now let's not be too harsh. The poor fellow's homeless, and I've not used my carriage house lately. Aye, not since your new fad started. What's your name, boy? Jack Weasel, sir. I can tell you're real oh. gentry, sir, and know how to treat them as is down in their luck. Not like some as has no heart. Oh, real gentry. Yes, intelligent fellow. Encourage one weasel, and you'll soon have a whole pack of them on your hands. Every chap has a few friends. I was watching when you drove your fine car past, sir. You saw me? You've a natural talent for driving, sir. Dash and fire, I say. There. And I heard all them other gentlemen said against you, snooping, eavesdropping. I say, you ought to buy a bigger car next time. One with a little more power. Oh, you, my good men, may sleep in my carriage house any time you like. And my pals, too? They're adventurers like yourself, sir. The sure. Jen, Tom, Tilly, and the rest of you, out here. My wife, Jen, my cousin, Tom, his wife, and our friend. <laughs> Introduce yourselves to the most dashing of drivers in all of England. Oh. 
Oh, well, well now, I don't know when I've met such a great group of young people. Sleep in my carriage house all you like, my dears. We'll do that. Count on it. You amaze me. Oh, yes. I am an amazing fellow. You see them all their friends moving in. The stoats, the foxes, all the top characters of the neighborhood. And now, now, let's not make a big thing of a bit of hospitality. Toad Hall could spare a little refreshment for a group of high-spirited young people. Now, gentlemen, shall we go up to the hall for lunch? Come, Mole, I'll show the way. And after lunch, up to adventure on the open road. Stop. Toad, you have brought this upon yourself. Mole, rat, take those ridiculous garments off of him at once. Oh, oh, oh no, see here, Badger. And now, you, now you're no longer told, hair of the highway. You knew it must come to this sooner or later. You paid no attention to, to the police. You've gone on squandering the money your father left you. You spent days and nights in the hospital. That too. And you're getting the decent animals of the district a bad name with your reckless driving. Oh, my dear old Badger, you've always known of my free, adventurous spirit. Gentlemen, will you excuse us for a moment? <coughs> Step this way, Toad. Now. <coughs> Independence is all very well, but we animals must never allow each other to make fools of themselves. Beyond a certain limit. And that limit you've reached. <coughs> Now, you're a good fellow in many respects, and I don't want to be too hard on you. You're now going to hear some facts about yourself. Oh, facts? About um, me? First, consider your ancestors. None of them have ever been arrested. But you... Only once! Or twice. Five times before the magistrate. That time you hit the tradesman's cart, what if you'd have hit him? Think, Toad, he has six children. Oh. Think of the six orphan children of that honest trade. <laughs> and what if next time you not only smash your car, but yourself? <laughs> Think of your friends, Toad. <coughs> Rat and Mole and me, all dressed in black, bringing wreaths of flowers to your funeral. <laughs> Enough! A mercy! <laughs> Do you promise never to buy another car? <laughs> oh, I promise! I'll promise anything! Only don't talk of the six orphan children uh, 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 and my funeral. I can't bear it. <laughs> then give me your checkbook to keep for a while so you won't be tempted. Oh! There, dry your eyes. You'll thank me for this someday. You may approach, gentlemen. My friends, I am pleased to inform you that Toad has seen the error of his ways. He has given up cars forever. <coughs> I have his solemn promise. Oh, good news! Of course, Toad's weak yet, and we shall have to stay with him in the hall and guard him against backsliding. It's all for your own good, Tony, you know. We'll take care of everything for you. No more brawls with the police. Oh, and no more weeks in the hospital. The good work begins. Toad, I want you to repeat before your friends here what you said to me just now. First, you've seen, you're sorry for the wrongs you have done, and you have seen the folly of them. Oh, oh, I'm truly sorry. 
No! I'm not sorry! And it wasn't folly, it was simply glorious! What? You backsliding animal! Didn't you tell me just now? Oh yes! Yes! I would have said anything then! You were so eloquent, dear Badger, and put all your points so frightfully well! You really took advantage of me! What did I tell you? And I've also been thinking, and I've remembered what my weasel friends said. They like me. They think I cut a very dashing figure in my motoring clothes. And they think I drive a very well. <laughs> Can't you see through them, Toad? I'm beginning to see who my real friends are. Weasels! I propose to order another red motoring car immediately. Mole Rat, we must save him from himself. Get ready. Oh, oh, poop, 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 the red limousine is mine, poop, poop. He's having an attack. Oh, I'm told, king of the road, poop, poop. Poor animal, he doesn't even know we're here. Rawr, adventure, excitement, the open road. <laughs> toad? Toad? Poop? Poop? <laughs> Mole, go and watch your handkerchief in the river. He's growing weaker. It's a real attack. We dare not move him in this condition. Ah, Mole, good. Apply it to his forehead. <laughs> Gently. <laughs> Poor animal. He's unconscious. Do you think he'll be well in time for tea? Tea? At a time like this? <gasps> Thank heaven you're still here. Quiet, Toad is- Did Portly come back? Last time I saw him, he was with you. I thought you were taking him home. I stopped to buy him some books. A good idea. A few adventure stories. <laughs> Improving books. And I thought I'd teach him to read. Only, he didn't seem much interested. Well, what happened? Nothing happened. I was glancing through the books to make sure they'd be right for him. And then... And then... <gasps> I'm sure nothing's happened to a fine, sensible lad like Portly. He's not very old. Do you suppose he could have gone to the Wild Wood? Oh, not the Wild Wood! Dark oh. and deep and dangerous. Oh, he never is going there. Mole, it's not so bad as all of that. I live there myself. <clears throat> well, in the more open part. Never fear, we'll find Portly. Come along, Mole. Rat, you stay here and watch over Toad. Very well. Sharply, mine. Certainly. You can depend on me. <laughs> Rat? Rat? Is it you, my dear old friend? Right, Toad, Toad. Feeling better? Oh, yes. As much as I'm likely to. Now. Good. You want to try and stand up for a while? Oh, dear kind rat, how little you realize. But don't trouble about me. I hate being a burden to my friends. And I don't expect to be one much longer. Well, you've been a fine violent to us all. And I'm glad to hear it's going to stop. Oh, I shan't trouble you further. Oh, no. Toad, Toad, what is it? Oh, don't trouble about me. Can I do something for you? Well, perhaps if you'd be so kind, my last request. That's right. Go to the village quickly and fetch the doctor. Quickly? The doctor? What for? Oh, surely you've known of my injuries lately. My time's in the hospital. Yes, <laughs> yes. And that scuffle now, I blame no one, but in my serious condition. Toad, is this pretense? I'll call it what you will. Why should you trouble? Perhaps tomorrow you may be saying to yourself, oh, if only I'd listened to him. If only I'd done something sooner. Toad. I'll fetch the doctor instantly. Do you hear, dear old Toad? Oh, yes, faithful rat. I hear. And I hate giving you additional trouble. But would you mind also asking the lawyer to step around? The lawyer? Whatever for? To make out my will. Haste. Time goes short. Oh, Toad, I will miss you. I can't bear it. <laughs> Don't 
Oh, Thor, I thought he would. And now, once again, Toad will be king of the road. But how to get to the village? Psst, governor, over here. A weasel, my dear friend. I'll hang about in case you needed help. I've got a bicycle head out back. How about a lift to the village? Ooh. Capital, my dear fellow. A true friend. That's what you are. Hey, Jay, quick one, boy. Let's hop it, sir. We can take turns riding the bike. I know where we can find a lovely new limousine in town. A purple one. Purple? Yeah. Hurry, before that bunch of killjoys comes back. It's downhill most of the way. right -o. Well, they're not down that way. Rat, we're... Rat. Rat. He said he was dying. He asked me to go for his doctor and for his lawyer to make out his will. <laughs> he did it awfully well. He did you awfully well. <sighs> However, talking won't mend matters. We must think of what to do. He may come back for his check. He can't buy much without us. Oh, clever rat. I don't miss much. <clears throat> Here's the plan. Mrs. Otter and I will for you. Mole, you hot foot it down the high road and alert the police. Tell them about Portley's being missing, and also it's important they find Toad before something else happens. Rat, <clears throat> you stay here. Toad comes home before we get back. Don't let him fool you again. Oh, I'll doctor him. He needs to rise wool for sure when I'm through with him. How dreadful. Portley and Toad both. Missing their tea. Mole, I insist, try and be serious. Come along, Mrs. Otter. Keep your courage up. Yes, you were such a lonely child. If only I'd taken better care of it. Oh. Hunting a doctor and a lawyer. What a sucker.
despatched his friends, the game has ended. Oh, he's the slyest of all. A poem. And now, to bite off half a limousine, and then, boom, boom, want to come along. Well, now I'd like to, sir, but I've got to bring this bike back to where Jen borrowed it. Oh, borrowed it, did you say? In a manner of speaking, sir. I'll bet. Well, the sooner I buy my purple limousine, the sooner I can start looking. Looking for what, sir? For young Portly, of course. You knew he's lost. Sure, Governor. Only, what'll you do with him if you find him? Bring him back to his mother, of course. What else? Of course. Just like you say. Only, only what? Only some folks might think a growing kid like that would be better off making himself useful. Young Portly, what could he do? Oh. The kid's growing bigger all the time. He could be trained to work. Might not be a bad idea at all. Not at all bad. Now, what did that mean? Oh, well, oh, was there ever a toad so clever as the celebrated toad? He's out the window if only he can do and sing for the open road. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, well, 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 well. What have we here? A limousine, sir. Have you ever seen a fine car? I've seen a fine car. I should jolly well hope so. They're my life. I wonder what this little ever does. 
Count? I wonder if it starts easily.
tell you, can't I? He's all yours, jailer, for 20 years. The magistrate made it a nice round figure. I demand a fair trial. You had one, sir. Let me out. Let me out. My job is keeping in, not letting out. I demand the right to see my lawyer. Aw, his highness demands his lawyers. I tell you, I am Toad of Toad Hall, a gentleman. Hear that? He's a gentleman. Don't look much like a gentleman now. Oh, that's nothing. I was a duke. <laughs> I was a duchess. <laughs> something hot. It'll all seem better. What's that horrid smell? A good hearty cabbage and potatoes. I don't like cabbage. It's that or nothing. So be it. Nothing then. As you wish, sir. But let me inform you that you'll grow perishing thin. You hear that? His highness won't eat. What's the matter? Don't like our cuisine? What a pity. No pheasant under glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all is lost. This is the end. Oh, yes, this is the end. At least it's the end of Toad. Oh, the rich and hospitable Toad. The Toad so free and debonair. Oh, stupid animal that I was. I see it now. I let the weasels lead me astray by flattering me. Oh, wise old badger. Why didn't I listen to you? <laughs> you always talk to yourself like that. I beg your pardon. I didn't know anyone was listening. Much less a lady. I am the jealous daughter from Bellevue. I came straight away here. As soon as father told me you were neat, I brought along some of my own to your toad. You are a good, kind girl, but it is useless to try and console me. Oh, now cheer up, toad. Do come over and have a bit. I have given the word of an English gentleman. I will touch no food. Is the tea hot? Very hot. Now. I'm sure you're too polite as to cause a lady to have tea alone. <coughs> Just for the sake of good manners, do sit and have a bite. Well, no. Oh, is there marmalade? Heaps. Now that's better. I knew we should get along well. Do tell me about Toad Hall. Toad Hall is a self-contained gentleman's residence dating in part from the 14th century. Bless you, sir. I don't want to rent it. Tell me something real about it. Oh, oh, if only you could see it. The boathouse, the fish pond, the old walled kitchen garden, and the banqueting hall where I and the other animals gathered to feast, sing songs, and tell stories. Oh, if only I could be there now. Perhaps you shall be soon, Mr. Toad. More tea? Dear friend Toad, it hurts me to write you this letter, for I have bad news. There is still no news of Portly, and we fear his mother may not live long unless he is found. And there is more bad news. When we tried to return to Toad Hall, we were set upon by twenty weasels. I was beaten up and thrown out, as were all your friends, and we don't really know what to do. As of now, the weasels are in full possession of Toad Hall. Oh, it's so lonely here. <coughs> One gray, gloomy day after another. <coughs> oh, Penelope again. You're always my benefactress. What did you bring this time? A pudding, a real plum pudding, and punch. Oh, you are so kind. From dear old Mole? I don't deserve it. Uh, no! Uh, no! No! What's happened? Here. Oh, if only I could be there to help protect my home and to join the search for the dear child. Oh, my dear friends. Oh, my folly! <laughs> Courage now! Eat your pudding! Excellent. 
excellent pudding. <gasps> Rare punch. Toad. Yes? Just listen to me. I have an aunt who's a washerwoman. There, there. Never mind, I have several aunts who ought to be washerwomen. She does the washing for all the prisoners in this castle. She's in and out so much the guards never notice her. All doors are open to her. Lucky. Now you could dress in her bonnet and apron and skirt and easily walk out of here. You're very alike in many respects, especially about the figure. Oh, we're not. I have a very elegant figure for what I am. Well, so has my aunt for what she is. Have it your own way, you proud and grateful animal. Oh, you are a good, kind, clever girl, and I am indeed a proud and stupid toad. Introduce me to your worthy aunt, if you will be so kind. Perhaps she and I can come to an agreement. That is, if she won't expect payment until I get home. Oh, good! My beloved aunt understands all that. She's in the kitchen having tea. I have an extra set of her clothes outside. Now off with your coat and waistcoat and throw them on the bed. Buttons aren't made for webbed fingers. <laughs> now first you start with a cotton print gown. On it goes. <coughs> there we are. Now to hook it up the back. Oh, the shame of it. Toad in women's clothes. But isn't it clever? Sort of a masquerade. That's right. It is a masquerade. And I am being clever, aren't I? Certainly. Now for the apron. There. Tie it around the back. And here's the shawl. Oh, wait a bit. <laughs> there! You're the very image of her. Although, I'm sure you've never looked half so respectable in your life before. It won't work. Well, why not? The guards will never give you a second look. I'll be missed. They'll see my empty cell. There'll be a few and a cry. Oh, no, they won't. See these pillows? We'll stuff them under your blankets. Help me, please. We'll raise them in the bed. So anyone looking in will see that Mr. Toad has taken a nap. Oh, excellent girl. You've thought of everything. Oh, no. What now? My honor as a gentleman. I can't let you take the blame for my escape. Silly Toad, I thought of that too. Here, take this string. And I'll sit upon this stool, and you tie my hands behind my back. And then take that gag and put it in my mouth. I'll say that Mr. Toad overpowered me while I was feeding him. Now take the laundry basket and scurry along. Oh, ingenious lass. But why are you doing all this? For me? Well, it's only partly for you. You see, I read the letter before I brought it up to you. It's the rules here. I see. Oh, and that about poor Mrs. Otter wrung my heart. Promise me you'll be very clever and rescue her little boy. Oh, oh, I will. I will. I promise you, Penelope. And thank you. Thank you so much, sweet Penelope. Farewell. Farewell. Oh dear, oh dear. That'll get around, the old one. 
Be off! Now, madame, that's a bad mistress indeed. Lost your money and can't get home. Got some kids too waiting for you, I dare say? Oh, yes! Any amount of them! And if I don't get home soon, they'll... They'll be hungry! And... Uh, playing with matches! And upsetting lamps! Oh, the little innocent! Oh, dear! Oh, dear! Puts me in mind of my own old mother, she does. Oh, bless you, my boy. I've seen you with gold clear through, or I shouldn't have come down here and didn't have pester you. Pester? Not a bit of it. Tell you what I'll do. I'm an engine driver, and my job gets a lot of shirts dirty, as you may well see. If you'll take a few of my shirts home and wash them and send them along, I'll give you a ride on my train. It's against company regulations, but they'll likely never hear of it. Hop aboard, my lady. Now hold on tight. Oh my, so you've got a one of six duty of an engine driver. Aye, she's old, but she was built for speed. Put this other line in her better days. I'll let her out a little. Travel, change excitement! You caught a bit of a cold, brother? That's an awful hoarse voice you had just then. Oh, just my throat again, lad. It goes in and out on me like that. My old ailment. A bit of flannel with pepper on it'll soon ease that frog in your throat. <laughs> I'd be pleased if you push along a bit faster. Hang on, we'll try. More coal, Bill. My bag's gonna break it on me now. Save your breath and swing the shovel. But that's even better than poop poop. What say, mother? <laughs> oh, nothing, lad. More call, Bill. <laughs> you mind your name, mother. Bill, watch it, I say. <laughs> oh, riding the rails is terribly sweet as we nip right along to the engine's tweet tweet. <laughs> that's right, mother. Sing away. Across the meadow and over the hill, total of suffer at home, you will. Who's that? What's that about a toad? Oh, a nothing lad. Just a snatch of an old nursery rhyme. Boy, Elf, we sing around this curve. Give a look back. See if you see what I've just seen. What, boy? Another engine down the line. Follow me. Come off it, Billy, my lad. We're the last train in this direction tonight. Stony if I ain't telling the truth, Alfie. Here we go on the curve of your side. Look what's following. Six. The old lady's gone green. She's car sick. I can see a headlight. Didn't I tell you so? It's an engine on our rails coming fast. It looks as if they're chasing us. Oh, mercy! They're gaining fast. There's a lot of people with their heads out. And they're shooting off pistols into the air. They're signaling us to stop. Better shout than shoot, says I. Oh, don't stop. Don't stop. Please, I beg you. Ah, don't stop, gentlemen. <laughs> You don't sound like no old lady to me. Oh, sir, you are so unkind. Don't be hard on the old woman, Bill. Right, don't be hard on the old woman. Ah, oh, gentlemen! This ain't no old lady. I see it ain't. See here now. Oh, save me, only save me, dear kind engine driver, and I shall confess everything. I am not a washerwoman. I am told, a land proprietor. I have just escaped prison by my great daring and cleverness. And if these fellows recapture me, it'll be chains and misery once again for poor, unhappy, innocent toad. Poor, a gentleman criminal. How many had you murdered, sir? Murdered? Oh, not that. Shut up, Bill. Now, what were you put in prison for? Oh, I only borrowed a limousine while the owners were away at lunch. Cops a limousine? Poor, that's rich. Bill! Who cares what happens to our competition? True. I don't hold with cars. People should travel on trains. My sentiments exactly. Now a great puffing steam locomotive has ever so much more zip and go. Oh, this bloke's all right, says I. I fear I ought to give you up to justice. Why, pour on coal. Give him the slip, says I. Right, right, listen to him. But since it was only a limousine, and I don't hold with them, and since I don't hold with being ordered about on my own engine. Yes, pour on coal, Bill. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, dear kind engine driver. Pour on coal, Bill. Right. Old oh, lady. <laughs> faster, faster, they're gaining. <laughs> so they are. More coal, Bill. I'm shoveling all I can. They're getting closer. <laughs> I'm afraid it's no good.
good, Toad. They're running light, and I've got all these cars to pull. It'll be dial for me. What's to do? There's just one thing left to do, and it's our only chance, so listen carefully. There's a long tunnel coming up soon. I know the one. And on the other side, a thick wood. We'll dash through the tunnel, slam on the brakes, and let you jump out and hide in the woods. Good show, Alfie. You've got a head on you. Now mind, and be ready to jump when I tell you. Pull in your head. Here's the tunnel. Down brakes. Now, are you ready? We're ready. But isn't that a river down there? Jump! Why, <laughs> <laughs> Elf? You forgot the river. Lord love a duck. He'll drown. Oh, oh, ah. He's bobbing up. Good luck, Toad. He's swimming. I think he'll make it. Full speed ahead, Bill. like I said, you wouldn't have sprained your ankle. Come along now. I've got to rest a minute. You always want to be boss. Who's got a better right? It's thanks to me we're living high at Toad Hall. We were living high at Toad Hall until you started giving us ads about the servants quit. They were a lazy lot anyway. Once I get my paws and put the otter, I can train him to do most of the work. Come along. We've got to find that kid before someone else finds him and takes him home. Ouch! Oh well, we may as well rest here a minute. Tom Tilly and the others will be along soon. Let's hope they've seen Portly. I don't think your idea is much good anyway. Portly isn't old enough to work, and it'll cost the Earth to feed him. The trouble with you, Jen, is that you're thinking of Portly as if he were a young weasel. There, I admit, you've got to be careful. A young weasel must have time to play and plenty of good food. But otters aren't like weasels. It's a kindness to teach Portly to work. It's all he's good for. We'll give him table scraps to eat. He won't touch them. His order says he's very particular about what he eats. He'll eat the scraps and beg for more. And as for the work, he'll work and work fast. I suppose you're right. I'll see if I can walk now. Someone's coming. <sighs> Mrs. Weasel, Mr. Weasel, have you seen anything of my son, Portly? Portly? Why, I don't know if I'd recognize him if I saw him. Have you seen Mrs. Otter's boy, dear? Oh, dear, Miss Otter, I've been looking around everywhere I go for the little darling. Now, I know he isn't on the main path back there. Well, wait, I do recall seeing some paw marks with a little path right in the woods. Did you look there? No. No, I hardly noticed the little path. How far back would you say it is? About half a mile. Then, do kindly excuse me. I'll hurry straight back. Good luck. Let us know when you find him. Thank you for your kindness in directing me. I'll surely let you know, kind, true friends that you are. What did I tell you? I was of no way. It'll be a kindness to teach Polly to obey orders. That'll be Tom Tilly and the others.
Dear Mrs. Ott, pray sit down and drink your tea. Tea? At a time like this? With Portly in danger? But we must wait for Badger. I'm going to Toad Hall now. Insist on going in. My dear Mrs. Otter, please be patient. If we're going to help Portly, we must have a plan. We must wait for Badger. Directly I told him the news about Portly. He sped off to Toad Hall. He said he had just filed the way of the land. But what can he do? What could even four of us do against so many? Oh, I don't know. But Badger is shrewd, always thinking, thinking. And no one's ever gotten the better of him in the end. Drink your tea, Mrs. Otter. It'll warm you for whatever business we have to do tonight. I'll stand here by the window and wait for Badger. Very well. Not sleeping nights it gets me so unstrung. And I shan't wait much longer. Depend on Badger. Roll! What is it? There's an old lady swimming in the river with all her clothes on. Oh, no accounting for tastes. Now she's up. And now she's under. Help! Oh, oh, help! A deep voice, old lady. I'll run help her. That way, Ratty. Good show. You've got her. Bring her in by the fire. Is she hurt? I don't know. She's a little green. <laughs> What's that? Toad? Toad! You escaped! You clever, ingenious, intelligent Toad! What are these strange garments? Hush, Mole. Can't you see he's all in? Toad, are you OK? Oh, Rat. Oh, Mole. I've been through such times since you last saw me. Such trials, such sufferings, and all so nobly born. And then a disguise, this washerwoman's costume, and escape, all so cleverly planned and carried out. Stolen right on a locomotive, pursued by another locomotive, loaded with police, oh. a leap into the river. Clever toad, intelligent toad, escaped as a washerwoman. Oh, I am a smart toad. And make no mistake, toad, stop railing on. Here's Mrs. Otter. Oh, my dear Mrs. Otter. Mr. Toad? Is it indeed you? Yes, it is I. Escaped from prison, especially to help defend my home and to join the search for the your child. do both at the same time, for the weasels have portly at Toad Hall. Toad, Mole, pour Toad a cup of tea. Toad, stand by the fire and let your clothes dry. Oh, but Ratty, I do look a fright. You look a fool, and that's what you've been making of yourself. You're quite right. I've been a fool, but I promise I'll reform. And as soon as I have some dry clothes on, I'll head straight to Toad Hall to drive those weasels out. Not so fast. They have sentinels with guns. Guns? And Rat was terribly beaten. And Badger's there now, spying on Philander. All of us, trying to preserve your property for you. Oh, but the main thing is to get Portly from them. Oh, Portly in their hands. Let me say that once before they kill the child. Yes, the god one. Stop. What could either of you do against their guns? You don't help Portly by getting yourselves killed. We must wait for Badger. Oh, that's Badger. Come in here, old Badger. We have a jolly surprise for you. Toad's home. So, so I see. What's this, a masquerade? I'm dressed as a washerwoman. This is how I escaped from prison. Clever of me, huh? You'd have been clever still not to have gotten there in the first place. Mrs. Otter, I found a way to rescue Portly. Rest assured, we shall do it tonight. I'm now going to tell you all a great secret. There is an underground passage that leads right from the river near here right into the middle of Toad Hall. I have just checked, and the passage is still quite open. Oh, nonsense, Badger. I know every inch of Toad Hall inside and out. There's nothing of the sort, I assure you. My young friend, your father, showed me this passage years ago. Don't let my son know about it, he said. He's a good boy, but simply cannot hold his tongue. If he's ever in any real danger and could use the passage, you may tell him about it. But not before. Oh, well, well, perhaps I am a bit of a talker, but a popular fellow such as I am talks a lot. <laughs> now remove those ridiculous garments so I may feel I am speaking to an English gentleman toad, capable of action and daring. If you'll excuse me, ma'am. 
Meanwhile, I'll tell you what I've learned by tonight's spy. The weasels are having a great party, and the stoat sentries are being very angry at left out, being left out to stand guard. The place is ripe for invasion. We must attack tonight. The weasels will be eating and drinking and carrying on, suspecting nothing. No guns, no swords, no arms of any sort whatsoever. But the sentinels, the secret passage will allow us to bypass them. It leads right up into the butler's pantry next to the dining hall. Aha! The squeaky board in the butler's pantry! If only Portly's still safe. I saw Portly carrying a tr very heavy tray. We don't have to worry about him doing his part. We shall creep quietly into the butler's pantry. With our pistols and sticks and swords. Rushing on them. And whack em and whack em and whack em to arms. <laughs> but where will we get arms? I've taken all we need and hidden them in the passage near the top. Good old badger thinks of everything. Lanterns for everyone. Lanterns? Pooh, what will we need lanterns for? We shall need them in the tunnel. Oh, yes, the tunnel. Now, Toad, do put your vine to this. One for all, and all for Toad! <coughs> We should be able to subdue these ruffians with our sticks and Mrs. Otter's broom. But just in case, take these pistols. Is it loaded? Let's try! No! Not loaded? Yes, loaded. Don't wave it about so it might go off. Oh, uh, true. Be careful with the pistols, fellows. <laughs> Belt and cut. <coughs> Quickly now, we haven't much time. <coughs> now, line up to enter the tunnel. Mole first. I should go first. He's my son. Mole first. He's best suited for it, with long experience at burrowing underground. You mean, I'm an expert at something? Oh, how jolly. Then I, then Mrs. Otter, then Rat, and last Toad. Last? It's a position of honor. You're the rear guard. Oh, oh, how clever of you to realize my importance. Into the tunnel. It's all the commotion. It's Toad. He's stuck in the bowl of his cutlass. <laughs> Toad, I warn you. The path is looking sharply right up here. Shh, you're right under them. Mr. Toad. <laughs> Remember, who will not be with us for 20 years. <laughs> so I want you to hear a little song which I've composed on the subject of Toad. 
Rash. But wasn't I clever? He's alive! Hardly he's alive! How shall we keep him from being harmed when the fighting begins? Toad, you've upset my plan. Then I'll show you something else. I've had experience lately imitating old women's voices. Oh, no. Partly after you, lazy brat. You want it in the kitchen. Mama! <laughs> Quick, Mrs. Adder. I told you in the tunnel will they be safe. We must attack your arm. They've heard the trade band. Jack, be a smart weasel. Sit down in this chair, take a deep breath, and think. Ah! Whack, sir! Whack, whack! Ah! Spare me! Spare me! Oh, 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 oh. This way, step on. <laughs> I see you found the rest of the leaders, Toad. Now, off to the police. Oh, governor, not the police. 
to leave the country peaceful like. Certainly to the police. They're waiting in a van outside for you, so don't try anything. Now march! All right. 